let all the earth keep silent. God has been so good to us throughout this pandemic, throughout this cold weather, throughout all of the sickness that we are going through. But I know a man that can cure everything. How about you out there? Isn't God good? Yes, he is. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. Yes, he is. God is good. Yes, he is. Let us go to God and pray. Yes, he is. Oh, precious God, our heavenly Father, it's once more and again just a few of your children that are here at worship one more day. God, we want to say thank you. Thank you. For life, health, and a portion of the strength. Thank you. God, we want to say thank you. Thank you. For all that you are doing. Yes. And all that you are going to do. Yes. Father God, we just bless your name this morning. Yes. No matter what we are going through, God, you say you will be right there. Yes. And God, I just want to give you all the glory and honor that is due unto you. Father God, thank you for just being so good to us. Father God, we know if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be right now? Father God, we just want to ask that you just bless mankind all over this land and country. Father God, bless those that are here right now in the sanctuary. And Father God, continue to bless our Shortages, 
Amen. Pray for situation that will shape our very spiritual foundation. Amen. Knowing and understanding that God is in control. God is in control. Amen. And he'll never, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Pray for us, stop the senseless killings. Amen. Those sick with COVID, we pray for them, we lift them up. Amen. There's still some uh, that are experiencing COVID. Amen. This thing hasn't gone away, but the numbers have subsided. We thank God for his almighty, mighty covering. His grace, His mercy, Him being our strong tower and our healer during this time. We give Him all the glory, every bit of the honor, and every bit of the praise. So I'm asking Brother Brown to come back right now, if she will, and just pray for our prayer list. Pray for our prayer list, those that are sick and shut in, and pray uh, for those that are bereaved. Uh, just those two categories, theme and our prayer list, and those that are bereaved this particular time, and those other issues. Uh, that we call now in the name of the Lord, school system, military, so forth and so on. Amen. Our very own Reverend Shirley Brown. To God be the glory. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Oh, precious God, our Heavenly Father. You heard the prayer list. Yes. And God, we know that you know already who's you know that prayer list. What they are ready to do. And God, we lifted them up right now in the name of Jesus. Every one of them, Lord God, whatever they are going through. Thompson, Minister Trent Thompson, 
if you will, to come and give us our military prayer and bless our tithes and our offerings. But let me give you this announcement. Uh, don't forget now that on Wednesdays we will have our Bible study uh, at 7 uh, p.m. 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. However, what I want to mention is that for the next five weeks, the next five weeks, this week has already passed, that if you are led, only if you are led, don't do it out of tradition, don't do it uh, out of cost Pastor Mason, Lady Mason asks you. But if there's something in your life that you need to be looking at, self-examination wise, amen, and you need to be petitioning God, amen, we want to ask you to enter into fast, enter into fast, uh, beginning on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. and ending on Wednesday night, uh, excuse me, Tuesday night at 8 p.m. and on Wednesday night at, ending Wednesday night at 8 p.m. right after Bible study. Amen. Now, that's abstinence from food, from definitely food. But since it's one day, if you really petition the Lord, you're strong enough. Amen. And you know the Lord is holding you. You can uh, do without food or water for that time. Now, I'm going to leave that up to you and God. Amen. I'm going to leave that up to you and God. But food, uh, definitely, but food and water uh, for one day. Uh, after that, it's a little bit harder to do without water. Uh, simply because of the body needs and so forth. But we thank God. We thank God for those that will enter or may enter into that particular fast uh, during this Lenten season. So we're going to do this every Wednesday uh, leading up to Resurrection Sunday. Every Wednesday leading up to Resurrection Sunday. And there's specific things that, first of all, self-examination. First, first of all and foremost is self-examination. Lord, what needs to be changed in my life? What do I need you to change in my life? Don't go to God asking him for something. Amen. Ask him to change you. Don't go ask him for something. You don't need no pray for no new car. You ain't fasting for no new car. Amen. Or a new home. Amen. You ask him for self-examination. But we want to definitely do that period, do a prayer time, lift up Ukraine and Russia. Amen. We definitely doing that prayer time. We're going to lift up New Emmanuel Chapel and churches everywhere, especially New Emmanuel. Uh, so this is our fast that we're entering into. And then what else is needed? What else is needed on the Lord in your life? Because you know what's going on in your life. Amen. But if you will, uh, again, Tuesday to Wednesday, 8 uh, p.m. to 8 p.m. Amen. 8 p.m. to 8 p.m. So we thank God. We thank God for this time of Lenten season, which is a time of penitence. Penitence, repentance, self-examination. We give God all the glory, honor, and praise. Uh, Minister Thompson, if you will, if you'll come before us now and just pray, bless uh, the military, bless the military, and bless our tithes and offerings. Amen. To God be the glory. Let us pray. Heavenly Master, just once more that we come to you, Father, to just say thank you, Father. Thank you for just giving us another day and another opportunity, Father. Yeah. As we come to you once more, I just want to ask you that you may guide the military, Father. Yes. Whatever they're doing, however they're doing it, please just guide their actions as long as you can, Father. Protect them and guide them that their eyes may always be in me on you, Father. That they may not look towards themselves nor towards others, that they may look towards you. Please protect their families. Continue to guide everybody in Russia, Ukraine, Father. Lord, uh, need Master, and just as well, I pray for tithes and offerings, Master. Yeah. That all the things you bless us to get to, and just give, give back what you would have us to give back, Father. Let us be able to know that it's not ours, but it's yours. So let us trust in you and be guided by you. In Jesus' name I do say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Minister Thompson. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Amen. As we go further into our worship celebration, I do want to announce to you that on next, next uh, Sunday, we will start back with in-person worship. Thank you, Reverend Brown. We will start back with in-person worship uh, beginning next Sunday, which will be the 20th of March. 20th of March and our service times will begin at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. So I wanted to let everybody know that uh, we still will put our worship uh, experience, our 
worship to the Lord out on Facebook, YouTube, amen, for those that may be sick and shut in, and uh, that's the way that they're able uh, to hear the word of God and not able to go to church or anything, so we want to bring the word to you, amen, we want to bring the word to you, God has given us the uh, technology, knowledge that we may be able to uh, do what he would have us to do in getting the word out. So we thank God for that. So next Sunday, beginning next Sunday, March 20th, in-person worship. In-person worship. Amen. Safety pro protocols will be uh, in effect. They will apply as they always have. Uh, and we'll keep moving forward in the Lord. I uh, want to let you know tonight now, tonight or last night, hopefully you didn't forget to turn your clock back uh, forward. Which way is it, Reverend Brown? Turn it forward. Turn it forward. Hopefully you didn't, didn't forget to turn your clock forward. So if you seem to be a little bit behind or a little bit ahead, whichever it is, amen, you'll know why. Because you didn't adjust your clock. <laughs> you didn't adjust your clock. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. In everything, in everything, in everything, uh, we give God glory, honor, and praise. I'm so glad to have Reverend Browning here on this day and to have Minister Thompson uh, here on this day and just about three or four of us in the sanctuary. We thank God uh, for them uh, as we go into our word of God. Now, last week, last week, the Lord enlightened our hearts with the message uh, that God is love. God is love. Amen. So God laid in my spirit uh, just to do a series. So I've been doing a series here for the next few weeks uh, about God. About God. So uh, after we do this election, after we do this selection, amen, then we get want to bring the word of God as he is, petition and meditate it in our spirit.
Amen. And we're going to make it up. What is the song, Terrence? Amen. We worship in the Lord. We worship in the Lord. Amen. We worship in the Lord. We worship in the Lord. Amen, guys. God is shining. Preparation for the day's sermon. We want to ask the Lord. Shine.
1 John. And when you get to 1 John, go to chapter 1. Go to chapter 1. Amen. Amen. Chapter 1. And go to verse 5. Go to verse 5. Go to verse 5. There you will find these words. 1 John. Chapter 1. Verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. I pray and hope that's what your Bible says. Amen. I want to use for a subject on this particular week, God is light. God is light. Let us pray. Most merciful, kind, heavenly Father, as we stand behind this sacred desk one more time. And even though it seems like our memory, our mind sometimes escape us, God, we know that we can always say Jesus. Amen. And when we call on the name of Jesus, we bring back to our remembrance that, that we should remember. So we thank you right now. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. And all of God's children said, Amen. 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 We give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. To uh, Deacon Good, who's with us today. Deacon Brown, who's with us today. Reverend Browning and Minister Thompson. And then we have a couple of others in the sanctuary along with our minister of music. So we thank God. God is light. God is light. Last week, God impressed upon us the privilege and the opportunity to express the fact that God is love. John now communicates to us this week not in a chronological order, mind you, but that God is light. Why does the beloved apostle write this to us? Why is John writing this to us? Well, look at verse four. Look at verse four. Verse four simply says, and these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Oh my God. Joy. The second attribute listed in the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The first attribute being love that we talked about on last week, listed in that fruit that carries over to verse 23. Amen, with love being the first. But here we are now today talking about God is light. And I just believe that the more we know about God, the better we become in God, even though the evidence now of who he is is already around us. Somebody ought to witness that there, that God is present in all of our lives when you stepped uh, out of your bed this morning, or rolled out of your bed, however you got out of your bed, you should have understood that God is all around us. Amen. When you stepped outside, you should be able to find evidence that God is still all around us. Amen. It's one thing to know about God, but it's another thing to know God and apply who God is to our lives. Can I get a witness in here? John said, we write in verse 4, and this is the message in verse 5. He records that. Look at it in verse 4. He says, we write to you. And in verse 5, he said, this is the message which we have heard from him. Amen. In other words, what we're writing is from a reliable source. Amen. We heard it from him. So it's not a message about fake news. This is from Jesus Christ himself. And now, since we know who the message is from, look at verse 1. It says that which was from the beginning, 
which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. Amen. So John is writing about somebody that he knows a whole lot about. Amen. He said, I heard. I heard it with my own ears. I seen him with my own eyes. My hands touched him. Amen. And now that all of this took place, I want to declare to somebody else that God is light. And I want to let somebody know that it doesn't matter what translation of the Bible you read this verse in. It will always be penned that God is light. Oh, what are you talking about, Pastor Mason? I want to let somebody know that he is not a light, amen, or a kind of light. But God is light himself, my word. That's why God was able to step out on the face of nothing in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Evidently now it was too dark and chaos was in existence. Because when you look at Genesis 1 chapter 2, it says the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. God even created other lights. Amen. He created other lights in the sky. He created the sun. He created the moon. And he created the stars. Not only that, but in the last book of the Bible, if you turn all the way over to Revelation and look at chapter 21 and verse 23, the Bible says that the city had no need of the sun of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God illuminated it. I come to tell you that God is light. Bible says that the Lamb is its light. And I come to tell you that God is light this morning. All light comes from him. Every bit of light comes from him. And in order to eliminate chaos in our lives, we have to have God through Jesus Christ. There has to be some light in our life. <laughs> Can I get a witness out there? Now I want to let somebody know that if you don't understand what I'm talking about, there is a contrast now here that all of us need to be aware of. There's a contrast between light versus darkness. When I look at the fact that God is light, he is absolute purity and cannot be spoiled even by darkness or the shadow of sin. God is light by nature in his essential being. And if we want our nature to change, amen, our essential being has to change into new creatures. And we must accept God through Jesus Christ. God is light and he cannot be extinguished. He cannot be smothered out and he cannot be dimmed in any form or fashion. God is light. And he cannot lie. So who he is cannot be compromised in us. I come to tell somebody that God is light. So there is no injustice in him. There is no taking of iniquity in him. Anybody hear what I'm saying? God is light. That means his holiness, his righteousness, his goodness, the very opposite of evil. God is light. And since John writes so that our joy may be filled, amen, that tells me that God is also joy. Somebody might need some joy this morning. And all you have to do is go to God. Can I help somebody in here and out there? Because darkness, on the other hand, darkness represents everything that is against God. Everything that is contrary to who God is. That's why the scriptures record in John 3, 19, it says, And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world. And men, watch this, don't miss it now, men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Whatever you do in the dark, I want to let you know that it will come to the light. Uh, so Y'all ain't praying with me out there. 
Do y'all not know that to be true? That whatever you do in the dark, that it will come to the light? <laughs> Darkness now, according to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 19, is the way of the wicked. They do not know what makes them stumble. Darkness is when your eye is bad, according to Luke 11 and 34. Darkness is hating your brother, according to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 11. Simply put, if no one, if one has not accepted Christ as their personal savior, if one has backslid or went back into the way of the world, I want to let you know that they're living in darkness. They love darkness. They love evil rather than Jesus Christ. Why is that, Pastor Mason? Because Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Yeah. And he is the one who has broken the power of darkness, of sin. Amen. How did he break it, Pastor Mason? By the shedding of his blood and his death on Calvary's cross. My God Almighty. That's why verse 6 now in our lesson says, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. By God. Anybody know that God is light? Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's why John says God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Not one iota of darkness. Not one inkling of darkness. Not even a little bit of darkness. All of you know that sometimes when you drop something on the floor and it happens to roll under something, if there's no light there, then it's rolled in the darkness. Can I get a witness? And before we can bring it back to the light, we may have to get down on our knees. We may have to go get a flashlight. Amen to bring it back into the natural light. I want to let somebody know that God is light. Yeah. And if you love him this morning, you ought to thank the Lord for being your light. Amen. I said you ought to thank the Lord for being your light. Yeah. Amen. Because I'm glad that one day he brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yeah. That's why the writers were able to pin the fact that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Thank God for the light. I'm glad that, Lord, you are my light. Because the writer also pinned, for the Lord he is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Thank you, Lord. For being my light. Because the Bible says that every good and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of light, in whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Thank you, Lord, for being my light. Because I heard you say that you. If you are like Barry today, amen, things that you used to do, you don't do no more. Places that you used to go, you don't go no more. Friends that used to love you so well, they walked away from you and they don't love you no more. I don't worry about it. You shouldn't worry about it. Lord, 
to know God. I come to ask you, do you know God? If you know God, you ought to praise God because God is light. When you know God and know He's light, that means that I'm going to seek His wisdom and not my wisdom because God is light. To know God and to walk in the light means that I understand His truth and I live in the light of His righteousness and not my righteousness. Somebody ought to tell him, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for where you brought me from. Because when I look back, Jesus, hallelujah, glory to your name, you've been good, yes you've been good, been better to me than I've been to myself, somebody, anybody, ought to tell him yeah, ought to tell him thank you, ain't he alright, I said ain't he alright. himself. He is light himself. We all need a power source. Amen. Amen. We all need a power source. When you take that and you look at it in an illustrative way of just lights that we use to light our houses. Lights that we use in our cars. Lights that we use to see at home. Understand that they will not work unless they have a power source. They gotta have a battery, <clears throat> amen. They gotta have a battery or they gotta have some sort of electricity and they have to be plugged in. I'm talking to somebody out there that need to plug into Jesus. Need to plug into Jesus because God is life. And I cannot know God unless I know Jesus. How do I plug into him, Pastor Mason? You plug into him by asking him to be your savior, to be your guy. Amen. To be your all and your all. There's some things that we need to let go in life that we're hanging on to that we don't need. And those things are in the dark. But if we keep playing in the dark, amen, I want to let you know that judgment day is coming. There's judgment in the dark, amen. There's sin in the dark. There's things that we don't need in the dark. But all you have to do is turn it over to the light. That's why John says what he says right here. This is the message. And we just preached the message. Which we have heard from him. And declare to you that God is light. And in him, in him, is no darkness at all. To God be the glory talking to somebody out there that perhaps you haven't given your life to the Lord. This is a mighty good time. A mighty good opportunity to turn it over to Jesus. You've been going around in circles. You've been wondering why things are falling apart. Your home. Your job maybe even your marriage. 
Because God is not the foundation of it. Because God is light. Only God and His light can show you the way. That's the only light you need. Amen. And when you stick with God, I want to let you know He'll stick with you. The Bible says abide. When you abide in God, He'll abide in you. You abide in Christ, He'll abide in you. Amen. Stop playing these mind games. Stop playing Russian roulette with your life. And understand that God is light. If you need salvation or restoration, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Amen. Just say, dear Lord, I come to you in the humblest manner that I know how. God, I've been trying to do things on my own. But I heard last week when you said that God is love. And that's been sticking with me all week long. And then this morning, you said that God is light. I'm beginning to understand that he's so much more. And I've come to the point in my life that I can confess with my mouth, believe in my heart, the Lord Jesus, and that God raised him from the dead. You told me if I would do that, God, that I shall be saved. Now, I may not feel saved, but I believe on your word that I have faith and trust in you. So now, Lord, save me. Deliver me. Set me free from darkness. Bring me out, God. It's only you can do. Deliver my family, God. Deliver our very being, God. And for somebody that walked away from him, just ask him to restore you. Ask him to restore you to the joy of thy salvation. His salvation. And he'll do that. Just say amen. 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 We thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for tuning in. And I don't want you to forget God is love, but also God is light. He's light. He's light. You don't have to change your battery in it. You don't have to put him on high beam or low beam. He's like, he never loses his illumination of purity. That's what it is. It's purity. We're getting ready to leave you now. We thank God. Hopefully somebody heard this message and it made a change, made a difference in your life. That's all stand. Lord, we thank you for your word. And we ask God during this season that you would just keep us strong, God. That you would not let us give up. That you would not let us give out. We ask that you would enable us to look toward the hills for which cometh our help. Knowing that all of our help Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power hence, now, and forever. And all of God's children sang together. Oh. Uh -huh.